will change. Um, so this panel is actually going to be a panel where um, you just stare at Michelle and me for the next hour. Yeah. Oh, I, I tried to get away, I got pulled back. <laughs> I know, I kept doing it. It's still happening. Okay, we're done. Okay. Um, so, this is meant to be kind of like a really cool, sort of more intimate conversation where you guys can like really pick Jim and Katrina's brains. So in order to do that, we would love for everybody to like fill in the space and come forward so that they can see all of you and hear all of you and be able to like answer your questions and kind of have you be a part of this panel. So if you are able, if you would kind of stand up and move and fill in all the empty seats in front of you, we would really appreciate that. I don't buy and while you're re um, uh, yeah, so, um, does everybody have a good concert about? Yeah! Oh, no, I just started, but yeah, no, I'm nice. really glad to hear that. Um, I, I'll take this opportunity real quick while you all are relocating to mention that uh, tickets for the uh, Bottle Share event tonight are still available as well as the uh, Charity Speed Puzzle Competition hosted by Michelle tomorrow morning. If you are competitive, if you like jigsaw puzzles, and if you like supporting charity, um, you have a chance to come and see if you can uh, assemble a jigsaw puzzle faster than the other teams uh, with a chance to win uh, something really, really, really cool if you plan on attending either Cider Fest or Winnie City next year. Yes. Hint, hint. Uh, so. And it's my first panel, so come and support me. Cool. I feel stressed. I think it's uh, 40 bucks per team of up to four, and um, you'll get a copy of the exclusive only available at this panel, um, Souvenir Jigsaw Puzzle to take home. And, um, and then panel participants will also be able to uh, get one for themselves. Uh, but uh, yeah, that's the only place this will be available. So, yeah. Cool, 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 cool. Okay. Yeah. Sorry, our ring cameras are going off in stereo sound up here. No, um, okay, so is everybody ready? Yeah. Okay. So without further ado, we'd love to bring our guests up here. Please give a big round of applause for Big Jim Miller and Katrina Hi. Thank you. Thought we, we told you guys to move up. Move up. On the stage? Here. If you're, if you're, <laughs> on the stage. I know it's supposed to be about friendship, right? Get cozy. Yeah. Get comfy. Make, make a friend. So, <laughs> question for you. Uh, you know, we had kind of talked about with Charlie and Michelle about, uh, you know, doing like a live commentary of an episode. We can do that. Or we can just have a real informal chat and we have no NDAs now. Yeah. We can just talk about the show. You can ask whatever questions you want. And we so actually will get to be We can actually pretty talk honest. about it. We can yeah. be honest. Yeah. Yeah. What would you prefer? Do you want option A, we watch the episode and we talk about it? Uh, woo! Yeah. 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 Or do you want the informal chat and we just talk about whatever, answer any questions? Woo! <laughs> this is equal. Sounds, sounds like the episode. Okay. That's it. All right. And then we'll, we'll just watch the one episode and then yeah. we'll, we can do, maybe do both. Uh, okay, uh, we have to come down because the monitor up here is not working, so we'll be behind, but we'll talk. <laughs> oh, we'll stand in the back. So we're going to watch, uh, this is Cutie Map Part 1. This is actually the first episode I boarded on for Pony, and it was the first time I'd ever storyboarded a song. And I thought that was going to be hard bit, but it actually was... Else yeah, and this is, I think this is the intro of the castle, a design that we inherited from brand. We didn't love it, uh, <laughs> but we did our best to make it work. Uh, if you were in the Guest of Honor panel this morning, uh, we talked a bit about how annoying it is to stage stuff in a circular room, the throne room, perfect example. This is a real pain in the butt. The other thing about it is the chair backs are so high that if you try to do it over the shoulder shot, you can't see anyone, so you're kind of required to do these weird, wide shots and there's a lot of empty space. And the chairs are kind of like weird dog beds, which is yeah. strange, well, I don't know. It was, it, was a, it was a weird choice, but we did our best to make it work. Yeah, uh, again, inherited for brand, which is why it's not thought out in a way that actually is nice to draw and nice to look at. You know, the whole concept behind this originally was sort of a nice the round table kind of thing and having them have a space to meet and deal with the problems in the question again. 
Oh, I forgot their butts light up. <laughs> If I get anything wrong or forget, again, it's been five years since the show ended. I worked on two whole other shows since then, and my head is broken. That was cool. How did we do that rotation? I, uh, flash some, magic. Some flashes. <laughs> so here we introduce the whole map of Equestria. I think this is the, there had been some stuff in a book where we had seen the uh, map. You guys can all sing if you want. Ah! Be a badger, tons of fun, beautiful, are faithful and strong, sharing kindness, we and magic makes it all complete. My little pony, do you know you're all my very best friend? So when we had made some changes in the previous season, we updated the the title sequence as little as possible because oh, it was expensive. Devin, yeah, Devin, Devin Cody, our, our producer. producer. Love working with Devin. Larson. Oh, wait, it's, uh, yeah, it's Larson on this one. Larson! <laughs> Good job, Jill Joke. How dare you I think it's more of a bunch of Python jokes. Yeah. Right. So I'm trying to figure out how to explain visually how they would be summoned by the map was, uh, Fun problem to solve when we figured out this. Just like Legend of Zelda. Hey, this is yeah, so Megan, oh. Megan was involved in this as well. There's my name. There's you. Yeah. I don't get top down because I just boarded on it. No, you guys, no, not till the end. Anything. Every show's different. Yeah. Some shows they let you credit a board artist at the front, some they don't. So the board artists on this were Katrina and Corey Toomey, and Katrina did the back end. So usually the, on a 22 minute episode you would have two board artists each responsible for about 11 minutes of content. Although I had to come to the thumbnail meeting so I had to sit through you talking for like a good six hours. That's your whole life. Yeah. Jim talking for six hours. Bro, that hat does not fit. That is way too good. Look at those bronze on his head. Yeah, it's true. Wow, look at that cheat where it goes behind the yep, nail. That's why you doesn't have to change direction. direction. Oh, Watch it happen again. Oh, here it comes. Here it oh. comes. Yay! Oh, oh. End of the line. Uh, see how they don't actually stick down from the car? Yeah. It's hard to do. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. There's there's no uh, big turntable to turn that thing around. It just reverses all the way back. See, this is where my section starts. Yes. No, here's the later. Is it later? Yeah. Let's get down there and find the spot. Wait, you're ready for it. See, I don't remember. We should just drop right in. So after the big epic season four finale fight with T-Rex, there was a lot of discussions of like, what do we do in season five? And that's why this episode is a lot more psychological than action based and you know there was a lot of discussions about okay so pony, being a pony is all about being unique and being yourself what would be a hard thing for them to deal with and that's where we get this village of equality where everyone's forced to be the same it's not about comedy you know what's really handy about Pegasus is that it flies when so you're trying to cram five characters into a shot you can just you can fly up above everybody else. Oh yeah, I remember getting used to boarding for Pony was getting used to trying to do compositions really horizontally because they're so short and forward. And I was used to kind of having like a lot of characters that really like long and tall. Right. Creepy smile. But. <laughs> One of the other things we did with the, the town so too is we dulled down all their colors. Uh, when you watch the second half, of course, and they get their unique personality, so the colors pop back. And... Did you just did you just turn down the saturation on? No, the... I think they were. Or did you did you do the tint? Because sometimes we would do the tint. No, I don't think because the tinting was an after effects thing and it was too many shots. Oh, so, so I think we we went in and adjusted the build. Had two builds. Had an instance. Yeah. 
Welcome. 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 Not creepy at all. Oh, that was just so solid hair. Hmm? Well, yeah, well, it's that sort of really matronly bag. We use. Well, you certainly come to the right place for lunch. Oh, I see. Well, all are working here at our little thing. My name is Double Diamond. We're in the party stable. Double Diamond. And this is Pinkie Pie, Flutterfly, Rarity, Rainbow Dance, Wild Eye Park. And you all have your own unique cutie mark. Creep. <laughs> <laughs> if I catch anyone looking at my butt that close at this time, I'll be real mad. If you ever have trouble in Arlington, it's true, you'll see. Perhaps you care to speak to our founder. Starlight. Starlight. I wish everybody would have crossed you with a spell in his ear from his eyes. You poor naive baby. <laughs> <laughs> I do love that Pinky's immediately suspicious. She was the one who will be. Yeah. It is super rude. Exactly. Yeah, she knows. There's, she can tell dead eyes. Yeah. She hangs out with Maude. <laughs> like the addition of Starlight to the show. Correct. Yeah. Correct. It was a it was a nice way for us to really explore uh, similar themes with a new character who would react to new or familiar situations that our character's already gone through. You wouldn't want to necessarily see that story again. So having this character who doesn't know these things, you can learn some of the same lessons again. We were actually talking backstage about how Kelly had just come off of Barbie. Yeah, Kelly had just come off of playing Barbie for a bunch of CG shows, and I think she really had a good time playing a bad guy. Real friendship for the first time. What about this? Around here, we don't flaunt our special talents because we don't have any special talents to flaunt. Is that the We were originally hoping to seed more of Starlight in the background of episodes throughout the season leading up to the finale after she runs off, but it just didn't pan out quite the way we were hoping. Okay, so this, this is where I came in. You did the song. And I was so furious because I'd never had to I had to board it in Flash, and so I would draw the drawings in story, or sketchbook, and then I would like import them into Flash and then time them out. And it was taking, it takes a really long time. It takes like double the time normally. We wouldn't do it that way today. No. But at the time, this is this how, is how we, we did it. it. Super hard. And it was the first time working on Pony, and I had to do a song. Uh, so yeah, I think I did it okay. I think it turned out. Did you guys like how those songs turned out? Like yeah. Yeah, a lot of butt shots. <laughs> and if you know me, That's you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think there's a. I like the bit where um, Fluttershy's nodding along and then Pinkie shoots him a filthy look. Part of the, the biggest fun about working on the show is coming up with all the expressions. Yeah, that, yeah. because we were using the same. Uh, bodies for the majority of ponies that allowed us to really build on our library of expressions uh, each season. So that's why as the show goes along, you get even crazier and crazier expressions. Yeah. There are those Pinky with her eyes glowing and like that. Yeah, Pinky is not into it. This was my face storyboarding. Yeah, that's <laughs> very much a good thing. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, thanks. <laughs> yeah, I'm actually, into what you it's, it's funny how, like, um, you can watch an episode and know who boarded it just based on how they produce it. Yeah, shots they do. Yeah, kind of shots they do. It's like weird handwriting. I think some of the layout and animation people didn't mind the the sort of dancing and music <laughs> stuff because in class it's easy to sort of repurpose. And I didn't mind it because I just talk and pace with a lot of drums. Because 
it's a lot of it's a lot of characters to handle. Oh, look at that! It's an equal sign. Oh my god! <laughs> Yay! Hooray! So you think that would have been the hardest part of the episode to board? More butts. It's me. Um, but I think coming up is. It's a little bit further. Yeah. Oh, is it? Oh, yeah. yeah. You have to go in the basement. Have to go in the basement and then. Yeah. I like so. that part because I gotta do yeah. more shots. That's true. I guess we're just a little confused by all this. We have no judgments here in our village. Yeah, okay. Each of us was confused once again, blinded by the false promise of our cutie marks. Whoa, whoa, whoa. There's lots of dirty looks in this yeah. show. <laughs> well, it doesn't seem like you need any help. Have you considered perhaps that you might have been sent here so we could help you? you? <laughs> no pony has ever come to our village and wanted to leave. Why should you be able to but that is the time Every time you see Pinkie Pie, she's just so, so mad. mad. <laughs> so upset. <laughs> just crazy. No doubt you will be as well. Double Diamond, please help our guests with whatever they might need. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> well, this will certainly provide a boost to our little community. When the rest of the sees that a princess gave up her cutie mark to yeah. Yeah, what called our town. Yeah, our town. Our town. Oh, we're totally not foreshadowing it! <laughs> 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 welcome. I think that welcome was me. Welcome! <laughs> <laughs> That's not a union rule. I don't tell anybody. Welcome! <laughs> Here's the local battle. We've got clothes as mine. Thank you. This seat, well, is it this seat? This is the one. Oh, evil. Really cool. The So when I when I came on, they were like, which section do you want to do? I'm like, oh, I'll do the table scene. It's not a lot of posing. It'll be easy. No, stupid. Stupid. Really hard. Because uh, they're on very distinct uh, sides size. of the street. And then we're on distinct the sides of the table. And so it was really hard to make sure that I kept the screen direction correct. So, you know, it's why it's on the right, and she always has to be on the right. Like, uh, you know, well, they're on the left. But if everyone else is on the left, they have to be on the left. And then we're coming in and out in between them and over the shoulders. And it was. And there's a lot of characters. And it's a lot of just exposition. So it's like, how do I keep this moving without, and being, visually interesting. Yeah, without being too cutty, without cutting too much, and yeah. Yeah, same. Yeah, I love food. Muffins? We have muffins? <laughs> we have terrible muffins. <laughs> they look like they're made from mud. Like <laughs> <laughs> I totally forgot. <laughs> Come on, guys. We've got to stick together. It doesn't matter what happened before. We're here now. Ah, I guess you're right. And the sooner we figure out why, the sooner we can go home. Gross. <laughs> Do you think that the smoke coming off them is uh, from heat or stink? Oh. <laughs> yes. Stinky heat. Steam you know I also really like drawing the characters with the buns because then they don't have all, this, all that mane to, to do. We are friends. Not around. Agreement wouldn't change that. I'm sorry. I'm just having a hard time understanding. Different talents with different opinions. Try to give her dead eyes there. She's like, I'm reciting the thing. <laughs> <laughs> what do you guys think they taste like other than plants? Feet. What is the most equal tasting food? Oh, it's hoof shavings. Hoof shavings, there you go. <laughs>
think? <laughs> Characters being watched by other characters and that it, yeah. it's fucking shit. Yeah, it's really hard to get that sort of direct, pointed eye direction and stuff. Mm -hmm. I got an idea, but you got me all that muffin, Pinky. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Does that mean that if anyone else ate them, they would die? <laughs> <laughs> or at least be immobilized. Yeah. <laughs> Bunged up. Oh, man. Oh, shit. That's so sad. I can't believe you ate all our muffins, Pinkie Pie. We best go and tell you some more. Nice work. Yay, horror movie time. I can't remember how many of these decks were in the script and how many we talked about in yeah, the. Because a lot of times they're not written in, we actually just do them. Why do you want to come out here? So no comment. This is about to happen. Baby. 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 Princess of Friendship. See the words? Again. Unconsented butt touching. Wow, just. In a boat. <laughs>
now you can spend the rest of your lives here with us. And we'll teach you just how much better life can be. Can look at more what? Yo, oh, is that a fire hydrant? <laughs> that guy's really good at peeing on fire. <laughs> So does oh, anyone have oh, questions that's... about... Wait, who can't this? see us if we sit down here, Jim? Can people not see, or should we stand up on the stage? Can stand up there? Can we see? Oh, the, the, you don't need to see us, you can just hear us. Yeah, you, you know what we look like. Go ahead. That's... So, uh, you may have answered this a minute ago. That's all right. Was there ever a name to come up with for that? Was the joke was that it was called Our Town. <laughs> Especially with the idea of it being an equal village, and I would see Starlight telling what was everyone, the... like, it's our village, our town, get it? It all belongs to us. Did we have an asset name for it, or was it just like. No, it was, it was like probably called one Starlight's town. Village or something. 501 Town. Yeah, exactly. 501 Town Exterior. And then you can ask, don't just. You can also ask questions about other episodes. Yeah. You may need to remind me because it's yeah. been a long time. Or a question girl stuff, Katrina can. I know some stuff. Yeah, uh, you pick some of those. <clears throat> No, because I would have... The second half was boarded by... Home. So each episode would have two different board artists. Yeah. So that was probably Christine Cunningham or Dave Weeb. I don't remember. They were the ones... That, that sounds like a Weeb joke. It does sound like a Weeb. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we call Dave Weeb. His name is Dave Weeb, yeah. so we just call him Weeb. There's a lot of Daves, so yeah. they often just call them... Yeah. Uh, uh, yes, sir, over here. Yes. Oh, thank you for standing. Yeah, uh, out of all the scripts, which one changed? It was that the the one in the diner, right? With the you're asking my brain to jump back in time so far. Salary review. Yeah. I honestly can't remember. I'd have to go one through. That you had to restructure a bit. Like it wasn't that you rewrote it, but I think you re. There was some reordering of the sequence of events. I don't remember what episode it was. I'm sorry. I, I like, I like I said, I've had two other complete shows uh, information in my I brain. I want to say it's one of the Rashomon ones. <sighs> which uh, which one is that? Okay. Yeah. Um, right. Thank you. Sorry. Uh, you go. There in the black. Yes, you. I was thinking. I called Mene Larson. Mm -hmm. I thought a natural name for that town would have been North Korea. <laughs> yeah, but then you know we get in trouble with some broadcasters. But there's not enough of a horse pun in that. Yeah. It would have to be like North Horia. That sounds bad. That sounds real bad. That sounds real bad. Yeah. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> it's not a communist thing. Stalingrad. There you go. That's much better. Yes, sir. Regarding, I noticed on the mares on there. They only have three or four um, certain uh, specific domain styles. Yes. And as far as like in North Korea, women are only allowed to wear their main their <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> their hair in like three or four different styles. That's where that's where you got that from. No. Uh, the reason for that is budget. Budget. So that we could repurpose. Uh, it would be different enough. Uh, it would give that sense of unity among people and. Um, you can just recolor them a million different colors and you don't have to do a brand new build. Sometimes the reasons for these kinds of things are really boring. Yeah. <laughs> They're not clever. It's really like, yeah, we couldn't afford to do more. Sorry, guys. And I think we saw it more as a cult thing. If you look at yeah. a lot of cult groups, they, they have yeah, they have a lot of kind of homogeny in the way they yeah. dress and stuff. Everyone has like a David Koresh haircut. Yeah. <laughs> it's like Jonestown, but less suicide. What was your favorite thing to work on for Rainbow Rock? For Rainbow Rocks? Ooh, um, probably any time the Dazzlings were walking around. Because when I first got my hands on it, I think it was all boarded by dudes. Dudes. And so they all were like, yeah, they're walking, it's fine. But they had no hips. 
They, had, they did not they have some strut. They needed some strut. So I think anytime I could add some strut in there, that was good. Um, I, uh, yeah. I don't know, because I was a revisionist on Rainbow Rocks. I was not. You also were, oh, wait, no, what am I talking about? The, the, uh, the kitchen scene. Yeah. The kitchen scene was my favorite scene. <laughs> See, I don't remember anything. And you did, like, the art at the end and the credits, Yeah, but the too. kitchen scene, the kitchen scene was the best, because it was that, it was kind of like the crux of it all. And I like that they were vulnerable, and they got to do a bit of, like, shadow work, and they got to do a bit of that, like, crosstalk, where, like, Sunset's in the fridge rummaging around, and, sent, and Twilight's sitting behind her. That was really good. Yeah. Right. In the derpy hat? Oh. Yeah, my question is, did you ever have an issue with the... Did you ever have an issue with the... I think it's standards and practices? All the time. Are you asking for just one? Just one. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, that was... I mean, for Sorry, those who don't was, know... Was there more to that put, like, Sorry, I cut you off. Yeah. part or just in general? I guess if there's anything you could just remember from the top of your head... <laughs> sure, you there's a lot. <laughs> Uh, one like of the dumb things, we were talking about this earlier, yeah. dumb things, uh, stemmed glassware oh we weren't allowed to have because that means alcohol to alcohol. them. Alcohol. Oh my if a, if a, a glass had a, uh, a paper umbrella in it, that meant alcohol. Can't oh. do that. Wow. If, it had, can't if it had fruits in it, it was Like alcohol. on the rim, it looked like alcohol. alcohol. Uh, if they didn't want characters drinking soda pop, so they would drink juice boxes. Same, uh, sugar same amount of sugar. Like the problem was the amount of sugar. And they, just same weird stuff. Oh my God. All the fight sequences, no one could get punched in the face. Uh, Every body shots, fine. Face, no, no. no. Uh, mine, mine drove me nuts. Was the uh, the way they let girls eat or don't eat? No eating, ladies. You don't want to get fat. <laughs> oh my God. Um, so we wow. had this one. Uh, I think it was. I can't remember which special, I don't know if it was one of the specials or it was one of the shorts and Rarity's having a sad. And we built her this giant, giant sundae. Like absolutely no one could eat this in real life at all. There's no way it was the size of a horse. And so uh -huh. she, so she, yum, yum. and we got a note like, no, no, we can't have her eating that because we don't want girls to, to get the impression they can eat their feelings. Oh my First God. of all, eat your feelings, it's great. <laughs> I encourage that. So we made it a normal size Sunday, which then was like, okay, but now she's actually eating her feelings because before it was like a joke. There's no way she could eat a Sunday that big. So it kind of totally took the scene from something funny uh. to something a little too real, which was, it yeah. was really weird. But we had a lot of kind of like. And then there were weird double standards because we did a life jacket and... one where you dumped Yona in the lake and she had to wear the life jacket and it was drowning. Oh, yeah. Because it's always like if. Oh, you just remind me of another one. Uh, there was an episode of the Cutie Mark Crusaders are doing a thing, and I think it was Scootaloo was doing a bungee jumping off the stage, and we were like, the standards is not going to let us do this. So she had knee pads, elbow pads, a helmet, goggles, a spotter. Like, we just made it a joke, because we knew, like, every time they would do something active, like, they need a helmet. They need knee pads. They need elbow pads. All sorts of dumb stuff. Uh, like I have one that was, it was a different show. It wasn't Pony, but what I thought was quite funny because it's often a kind of weird double standard. So, of course, like if the characters are skateboarding, like, gotta have the helmets, gotta have the knee pads. Later on in the episode, this character crawls into uh, a, like, uh, like show. who's Edgar and Ellen? Oh. <clears throat> they crawl into, like, the engine of a running, like, backhoe. And that was fine. And that was what? There was, there were, I don't remember the what show, but there was a happening? show where they wanted everyone to be wearing mouth guards when they did a, uh, a thing, and we we're like, how are they supposed to talk? <laughs> anyway. How do you know? Also, yeah. it's a thing. Anyway, uh, gentleman in the green shirt over here. One thing that I noticed from the uh, Our Town song, oh, I'll wait for the microphone. Not that old, I can hear you. Okay. <laughs> well, I might not. So, one thing that I noticed from the Our Town song was that there was a lot of unison in that. And harmony was one of the big um, themes of the show. And it's not just harmony of the music, but um, the fact in general that the whole is greater than the sum of the parts. Um, was there going to be more unison versus harmony contrasts in terms of the dialogue or the theming in? Um, in Twilight's Village versus uh, the main six? No, that was that was pretty much it. The, I, I, that's You should have been a writer on the show. Um, <laughs> that would have been interesting. A lot of it is like 
when you're when you're sitting down to board it because it doesn't have a lot of those sort of visual things in the script. It'll just be like there's a song and this is what the song is about, and then you have to figure out like how do we visually convey the theme of the song or the or the story. So you're right, like there's there could have been more of a contrast of like what's the difference between unison and harmony because. In that instance, it's kind of the same. Also, don't forget, I had to draw that in about four days. Oh, wow. oh, <laughs> right? And then, because, you know, you get six weeks to do a storyboard, you have two weeks for thumbnails. Songs take double the time. Yeah, they're so I had to cram in the rest of what I was working on for the episode, and then that song took up almost a week of my time. And then I'd have to go clean it up. So it's, you know, over a thousand panels in three weeks. So part of it is time constraints. I would have loved to do more of that contrasting, like maybe break up the, the main six and have them, you know, move, be different. But I mean, the most I could do was pose them at different levels and different head yeah. heights. And, Oftentimes, yeah. the best you can do is your first pass yeah. plus some revisions to make it work better. You don't necessarily get to yeah. do multiple drafts of a thing. Yeah, that would be so, nice. Maybe. You, you pick someone. Uh, Redshift. So I noticed the Our Town song, you said you storyboarded for yeah. it. It is a march, and I just wondered if, uh, if you had any point in that decision-making process to make it a march, and if you found that more difficult or easier than I mean, like, like, generic to, pop To pop draw pop. it as a march? You mean? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think Jason gave me some, so what happens is that your director usually gives you like, here's some, some ideas for how we want some of the visuals to go like some basic overview, so you're not just coming in cold. And the style of the song was yeah, is very, set before it even goes to the yeah. board artist. So the board artists get a, a demo version, not a full orchestrated version of the song. Actually, and we knew it was what? gonna be a march. Yeah, you, you guys will love this. I did watch some North Korea, uh, you know, marching videos, marching videos uh -huh. and like coordinated like marching band, like not marching band, but like kind of like that drum line, like, stuff. Drum line and synchronized and stuff like that. But again, not that those are communists or anything. No, uh, but again, it's I had to cram in, I had to do it real fast. So, but yeah, it, it does help too because you have that beat. So I'm like, okay, it's one, two, 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 two. So I knew how to pose. It did. It does help set like a rhythm for like yeah. how you paste your cuts yeah. and where you put your cuts. Yeah. Uh, and how you you know having those characters marching to the beat of the song as opposed to maybe the pop song where you're you're finding specific moments instead of all the way through. Yeah. Way at the back, purple hair. That's Rarity! It's Camp Rarity, oh my god, it's just perfect. Oh, it's so accurate. Yes! <laughs> okay. Well, I have a question because I know you for it like as a runway. I did. So, one, I love the way you draw legs. And two, because legs is fun to draw. At what point in the production were the costumes that they were wearing for that design? Did you make them or was someone else in charge of that? I think those might have been a brand design that we... I cannot remember. It might... It wouldn't have been me. It would have been on our design team, probably Cora or... Yeah, well, how it usually works is we would have a design yeah. department. We have a design department, so we have like an art director, and then we have like a character designer. So the character designer usually takes care of all the outfits. And then sometimes we'd have... For certain outfits, we'd have someone from brand send us what they thought they were going to make a doll out of. So then we'd have to take that, and it was normally like... Now, I love a drag queen. I love it. I love how over the top it is. But this was like a drag queen got put into a blender with another drag queen and then got barfed out. <laughs> and oftentimes it was like a million plaids, a million uh, patterns, a million things everywhere, ruffles, see-through. Stuff was completely unanimatable. <laughs> And so we have to over the top, over the top complicated. oh complicated and you can't move it. So we have to kind of take the essence of that and like figure that out in that way. And I, that that outfit might have been in, probably Cora. I think it was internal. I think it was Cora. Cora was the master of EG outfits. Yeah. The thing with the, those designs, like on the main series, Hasbro would usually have a handful of specific that we had things do. that they wanted to see in a season. So like. Yeah. One, I think it was season seven or eight, they wanted this swan boat. Yeah. And it's like, why do they put this stupid <coughs> swan boat? And they don't care. They, they don't, don't care. It was great because they were like, yeah. just put it in somewhere, we're making a toy of it. So we were doing an episode over there in Manhattan. We put it in the canal in the park. They were happy. Another one they were putting in a helicopter, they were making a helicopter toy. Like, and ours were all clothes. Ours were all like, because we had dance we magic. We had clothes sometimes. We, we had dance magic. Those were all like brand outfits, like the disco and the thing. 
which is, and they were like, we're gonna make a doll. So we're like, okay, they're weird. Uh, we did it, and then they didn't make a doll. We're like, we. Something similar happened to us yeah. with the, they were so hands-on for the Super Ponies oh, yeah. episode. They wanted to make those toys so bad. And they, the amount of like back and forth revisions on the designs with Hasbro. And then it was like three or four years before the toys ever came out and they were just repaints yeah. over existing toys. Anyway, Disappointing. You look amazing. Oh my God, Thank you so much. Thank you. I love it. I love it. Even Okay, who's next? Am I Thank you. Uh, um, you guys, go ahead. Pledge. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Get your armor on. <laughs> All right. Uh, so my question might seem a bit bland. Uh, it's a. It See, better not be. It's who's a, my favorite pony? <laughs> no, no, it's not that. It's a, it's a two-shirt thing. It's like, what were your favorite episodes to work on versus your most hated? Anything with crowds. I don't want to say a most hated because some my most hated may be someone's favorite. It's also it's more for me. It was like what is technically well not technically but what is what is time consuming for something that gives you a little like a small some amount of screen really time. Some things are really challenging in yeah. ways that you wouldn't anticipate them to be. But like I did, I got the hundredth episode made me so angry. I hated. <laughs> Because they had to put like what was it like twenty five ponies on that um, speakers. the speakers. Oh yeah. Oh, and my tracking God. that yeah, is it's not interesting to draw. And it's it becomes it's, mad. It's fun to watch, but it's not fun to draw. But then I really like how it turned out. I'm actually pretty proud of that it's, section. It's, that's how it works sometimes. So yeah, it's, it was it was really hard, and I you know I was mad the whole time, and I complained to you the whole time. <laughs> I don't like doing this. I don't like doing this. One of the other things, cool. <coughs> things like in the the finale of the show, like the the second to last episode, when all the ponies come over the hill. Flash doesn't like a lot of characters. No. Uh, we had to split that shot into three separate shots that were then combined into one in After Effects. Uh, and the more characters you put in a shot, the more likely the shot will crash or fail. Not render. Not render. Yeah. So stuff like that's a real pain in the ass. And because it's our own damn fault, because we would make the show as cinematic as we could, and every season we were sort of upping the game and upping the game, so that when we would send it to Hasbro, they'd be like, MORE! MORE CHARACTERS! <laughs> Wait, that wasn't it. You make, use your DHX magic. Oh yeah, that was a mistake. <laughs> that's, that's when they didn't want to write an action scene, they're just like, use your DHX magic. I'm like, do you mean nothing? You mean nothing. Alright, I guess I'll do what I want. You better do what you like. Uh, but yeah, what I like to do, I like doing the emotional scenes. I like doing anything that required a lot of subtle acting and yeah. facial expression. I like the comedy stuff a lot. Yeah. Like, if I can think of a funny joke to amp up what's already there, I find that weirdly satisfying. Especially when you show it to your crew and they're like, "Ah, that's pretty good." Like, you know, they don't feel like you're taking away something from them by beefing it up. Yeah. Uh, way at the back, over there with the wings. I saw your hand up. Did you have a question, or were you just stretching? I was stretching the wings. Oh, that's fine. We'll jump over here. <laughs> From a kind of a how often did you know like okay yeah we'll have another season while you're working on the previous one and <clears throat> like did that affect long term planning like because when Starlight's introduced right I understand the long term plan was to have her basically become another protagonist and therefore it was almost like, okay, we're gonna have her here in season five, and then in season six she's gonna become protagonist. Was that already planned, or was that something you had to do by year? It's so, it was weirdly a combination. Like the first two or three seasons, it was always very touch and go. Like we would finish a season, and we were not sure. Uh, and then, oh, we got picked up. Like season three, when they only picked it up for 13, we were like, well, I guess this is the end of the ride here, kids. Um, so, uh, seasons four and five were pretty similar, but then they want, at one point, we were working on three seasons at the same time. 
in various stages, and which is super hard. It was we were finishing six in the middle of seven and starting eight. Um, and once we got to sort of like the later seasons, there was a little bit more planning for not necessarily like long term, but maybe something that we could carry over into a next season. But like, I remember trying to pitch the idea in season seven that we would just introduce the concept of the pillars in that season and we wouldn't actually get to see adventures with them until season eight. <clears throat> Uh, but the executives wanted the seasons to feel a little bit more self-contained. So there was always that kind of push and pull about like, they never really wanted to end stuff on a major cliffhanger. Because uh, I had pitched this idea of, in season seven that uh, Starlight and sort of the new crew of her pals were, were, they were summoned by the map to go to different directions. So Star, uh, Starlight and her crew went one way and Twilight and her gang went the other way and during the, ended up involving the Pony of Shadows trying to build this body to inhabit and all this stuff. And they ended up, it was a, a way to have these two crews of friends at odds at the end of the season, and that Twilight and the gang would have to fight Starlight and Derpy, and I can't remember everyone who was in her crew. Um, Trixie, yeah, yeah. Uh, I thought that would be fun, but they didn't like the idea that it would end on this cliffhanger, because the Pony of Shadows was supposed to get away, and then the next season they would have to round up all the artifacts to bring the pillars back to help defeat them, blah, blah, blah. So I understand why they want to do that, wanted to do that, um, but my comic book brain is like, Let's, we can make it an event. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, it's, it's always a bit of a mix. E EG was like, we never knew what was going on. They would start to come in like, unboxing? An unboxing video? Oh, we're doing, oh, we're doing apps? Oh, okay, I'm trying to make that entertaining. Yeah. So yeah, but we were, we were kind of like the weird test, test, test subject, so. You're trying to pick. <clears throat> well, as you had pointed out, uh, the episode before with the uh, rear shot from, of Starlight and how, mm -hmm. oh, a bunch of shots with the Dazzlings, you yeah, added a uh, bit of hit movement. Were there any were there any moments where you were like, okay, yeah, the shot looks good, and then you were told, no, make it less sexy? All no. the time. There was that, there was some time. And it was never stuff that we thought we'd done sexy. It well, was there was a like, few really times at boards where I'd have to tell certain um, board artists, you can't have that many butt shots. Um, <laughs> there was also a little like tone down the the, chest, boob, the boob action the boob in uh, the Quest <laughs> Girls. Yeah, yeah. yeah. to be a little on the. Uh, it's still, it, you know, as much as grown-ups like it, which is amazing, yeah. it's not aimed at grown-ups, so it needed to work for the folk, the, the target audience. So well, we I think it was usually like that. a single pose, like maybe sitting on the ground, not cross-legged, but if you weren't Well, a perfect lady. example is uh, the show I just finished directing was these yeah. Yeah. 3D Strawberry Shortcake uh, specials that are on Netflix. One of the things we did was, because she had a skirt, and, but she's doing a lot of jumping around. So we made her underpants super hot pink. Uh, that way when you're reviewing animation, if you see that color, you know a change has to be made to that shot so it doesn't look as suggestive, right? You're not seeing up in that area. So. We, we got called more on expression, so like the half-lid eyes. Yeah, they thought that, that looked, too, looked stoned. Or, no, it's too suggestive. It's oh, giving yeah. that sexy look. Hello. Yeah, bedroom yeah, eyes. Too much bedroom exactly. eyes. We got called on that quite a bit. Yeah. So, yeah. Harry? Yeah, um, with this episode, it seems like quite mature themes, like communism. Um, Not communism, it's a cult. <laughs> no, Hasbro never, like, the, again, I don't, uh, in my opinion, I don't feel like Hasbro corporate was necessarily paying too much attention to what we were doing. As long as the toys sold. As long as the toys there, sold. We uh, and our executives at Hasbro that we were dealing with, like Megan uh, and uh, Liza and Brian and Mike, they were. They were all on board for us trying to push things a little bit forward. Uh, the story editors were on board for pushing things. And it was always a bit of a test, right? Can we do this kind of story? Does it make sense? Will our audience react to it? And if, you know, it's, we got four more seasons after it, so we must have done something, right? And, and kids aren't stupid. You can introduce complex concepts to them in a way that they can understand. They might not understand all the, the depth and nuance of it as you do as an adult, but they, they'll understand like the baseline. So there's no, no reason not to give them stories that they're gonna encounter out in the world. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, there in the black. Yeah. 
Yes, sir. Bien, okay. In uh, season one, um, one of the time, my brother trying to take care of uh, Philomena, the pet thing that he did, didn't know wasn't dying. Um, there's a Benny Hill bit in there. Um, yeah. Did, and I, I'm, I'm 32, so I barely know what Benny Hill is from my family guy. Did you ever, uh, how did Hasbro play in terms of notes and SP with regards to referencing live things? Like things as long as we didn't tell them what the reference was. Yeah. Like we got in trouble because we would often, um, you know, do ponies based loosely for legal reasons on real life people. Like there's Penn and Teller pony, there's a Celine Dion pony. There's a red leather media pony. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Gordon Ramsay. Um, and they often didn't clock it. There was one time a design went in and the artist left the reference picture in. On the, on the thing, and we forgot to take it off, oh. and they're like, you can't do this. And there was, there was real, like, well, we get in trouble for all the ones they don't know about. <laughs> but, um, no, I... There was a, a lot of, let's do this and see if they notice. Yeah, like, at the end of... It's a, a lot of ask for forgiveness, yes. not for permission. Yes. <laughs> like, they're not going to know that the end of, uh, was it season one, the... the Ceremony at the end is shot for shot at the end so of a new hope. Like yeah. shot for shot. <laughs> they don't know. Don't tell lot, them. It was a lot harder for us on EG because they're human, so we couldn't get away with caricatures because we couldn't call it um like An, um, uh, satire. Satire or because they're not horses. Although we did get away with George A. Romero as George one of the Romero, yeah. yeah as one of the directors <clears throat> and uh, Joss Whedon. Yeah, that was in, know, in retrospect we made well. well. Yeah. But anyway, George A. Romero's in there. Yeah. Um, yeah. So. Yes, sir. The cat here, USSF. Oh, yeah. So you did a lot of uh, very deep things in this episode, and the next episode has psychological torture. Was this <laughs> controversial to make, or was there an episode that was particularly behind the scenes controversial to make? No, we're all weirdos. Uh, so we, I think everyone's on board. Again, you know, we had an amazing crew of people who were willing to go on the ride and see where it went. Uh, to my recollection, there was never an instance of an episode where people were uh, upset. Uh, I'd say, too, we're adults working on this. Yeah. We're not kids. So, you know, you, you come in with your adult sensibilities and you have to, like, come tone it down to the kid level sometimes. So like, it's more interesting, because as most animation artists, you're working on, like I've been working preschool the last five years. So stuff like this is really satisfying to work on because you actually get to deal with real, more kind of, not adult, but like- More mature. More mature thing. themes, instead of just like, my friend is mad at me today, <laughs> or whatever. My shoelace is untied, my shoe what do I do? <laughs> Yeah, so, you know, it's, it's, I think that's why, like, usually when we were all on board behind, behind the scenes. I mean, of course, there, there may have been small things that came up that people were concerned about certain things, but we were pretty open to, at least I like to think we were pretty open to hearing people's concerns and having a discussion and making changes if necessary. But I don't remember, like, a big, like, Oh, half the studio's ready to walk out the door because they're not happy with something. <coughs> well, you can't anyway because you have to pay your mortgage. Yeah, that's the thing. <laughs> or your rent. Your turn. <laughs> okay, who do I got? Mm, they're in the cute socks. Thank you for the compliment. <laughs> well, they're cute socks. Okay. Um, they're cute socks. Oh, thank you. Uh, sorry, I have my phone down. <laughs> that's fine. If I can unlock my phone, that'd be great. Um, so I wanted to ask if you had any I want to ask if you had any information on the decision of making Trixie's uh, Trixie uh, sorry best friend. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, we pitched it just because they didn't seem like they worked on paper. But when the you know we tried it out in the first episode, we put them together, thinking like, yeah, maybe this will be a one-off. And then Kathleen and, and uh, oh, Kelly together were just. So damn funny. It was so fun seeing them play off each other because they're they're both trying to be better, right? But they're not good at it. <laughs> and that was just so satisfying to, yeah. to work. It's very odd couple, like Trixie's so laissez-faire, not very thoughtful in how she reacts <laughs> to things sometimes, and Starlight overreacts to everything. Had that fun odd couple vibe. 
uh, I don't think we would have kept doing it if it hadn't worked that first time. It was like the success of the first one made it enticing enough to revisit and revisit and revisit. So, thank you. You're welcome. Uh, way in the back over there. Yes, sir. So, like, when it came to corporate, yeah. did they have any, like, like, stupid, really, like, just out of, like, out of left field stupid kind of, like, retirement? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> also, did they also have, like, a blacklist of characters you weren't allowed to have in, like, the background? Pooh Bell. Uh, oh, yeah, Pooh Bell. Pooh Bell. Um, Pooh Bell was the chubby pony that was in that one episode. They, we wanted to do more with her because we loved her. She was a, a doodle that one of the designers did. It was Charmaine, and we, right? Charmaine, Charmaine. Uh, who later worked on Craig of the Creek. Um, she did this drawing we thought it was amazing. We wanted to put her in the episode. We put her in the episode and then Hasbro got really touchy that they thought we were making fun of uh, fat people or that we were encouraging eating disorders. We wanted to do this whole episode where uh, she ends up becoming a model for Rarity and Rarity has to learn how to make plus size clothing and how beauty comes in all shapes and yeah, sizes. Because, and there's a bigger body than this. Yeah, I'm and a bigger I, guy. And yeah, and, and I, and I, when I, if you guys don't know, we're together. Yeah. And when I saw him, I was like, I, I gotta have some. Come of that. on, shut up. Can anyway, I have some of that? We have to wrap uh, this up, guys. I don't know. Anyway, so yeah, so Pooh Bell, and they, yeah, they, they mixed that up. one, and then the other one was, um, well, Derpy was persona pony non grata for a while, yeah. uh, but we managed to get her back in, <laughs> and there's another one. I have the one where the girl with the really thick glasses. We had an incident. Oh yeah. Really thick glasses, and we had that Pinkie Pie song episode where she. She gets the nerd guy together with the other nerd girl, and the really thick Coke bottle glasses girl with the red hair was in the initial love interest. Yeah. But they said, oh no, her glasses are so thick, you're making fun of people with glasses. I'm like, people with thick nah. glasses exist, people they can't are. get a date. Yeah. Right. Weird. Um, but I mean, I had personal rules about background characters because they pull focus yeah. from the main. Sometimes you don't want to throw Derpy in a yeah. scene that's important because everyone's just going to be looking derpy. at Derpy. Yeah. <laughs> Anyway, we're getting a signal here to wrap it up. So thank you everyone for coming. Thank you very much. Really appreciate it. And we'll see you around the time next week. Thank you so much. <laughs>